my people. Hope you're doing great. Uh, I'm having a ball. You're about to not be having a ball. You want to know why? Because behind me is 7-6, right? And 7-6 brings back one of those things that we all moan and groan about when we say, oh, it's transformations. Uh, we got to do these things again. Yes, folks. As mentioned, we do the exact same stuff with linear functions, exponential functions, and quadratic functions. So the whole year up until now has been linear stuff. Now we're starting to get into the fun stuff, right? Fun stuff, okay? So these are our up, down, left, right, reflection, uh, vertically stretched, horizontally compressed, right? All that stuff, okay? If you need to, um, grab your cheat sheet out that, that I made for you guys, okay? Um, so do that if you need to. Uh, anyway, uh, if you want to fall asleep at night, read all this, folks, okay? All this really says is, hey, if, we're, if we have a number plus K at the end, well, if that number is less than, I'm sorry, <laughs> greater than zero, it's going to move it up. If the number is less than zero, it's going to move it down. So these are like our up-down moves, okay? And we see that, okay, in here. So here is our exponential function right here, f of x equals 5 to the power of x. And if it looks like this, well, the only thing that looks different, guys, is right here. A plus 1 on the end of that function, what does it do? Well, that just moves this um, up one unit, okay? If this was a minus 4, it would go down four units, okay? Plus 12, up 12 units. Minus 22, down 22 units, okay? So again, we're just identifying what's different and then figuring out what effect that has. And if you don't know, guys, put each graph on Desmos and then, okay, maybe look at the y-intercepts or the x-intercepts and see kind of how they moved, okay? It'll be a little bit trickier with some of them, but you'll get the hang of it. All right. Uh, what if we are adding or subtracting a number in with our exponent up high? What does that do? Well, again, guys, these are our left right moves, I do believe, okay? Okay, um, it says this graph is a translation of the parent function, here it is. Use the graph uh, to write the function, I'm sorry, write an equation for g of x. Okay, here's g of x, here's f of x. I don't know why they just tried to confuse us with that other one. Um, this would appear, guys, to be an up or down move, okay? So f of x has a y-intercept here, right, and I know f of x equals 3 to the power of x. g of x is going to be some transformation of this. Well, in this case, it appears to be transformed down. 1, 2, 3, 4 units. That is how we write down 4 units. Okay. I feel like we should do another one here. Ah! We won't, okay? We won't. Guys, if it was, let's say it was left four or right four, where would we put that move, okay? So let's just left four units, okay? If f of x is still the three to the power of x, and I wanna go left four units. Nope, you gotta be a g. So g of x equals Right? And then we're going to put that 4 here. Should I add 4 or subtract 4? You should add 4, right? Adding 4 would be left 4. If I subtracted 4, that would go right 4. Okay? So up, down, left, right, I think those typically don't pose too much problems for us. Okay? Now we get into the annoying ones. Remember, vertically stretched is the exact same thing as a horizontal compression, okay? Vertically stretched, horizontally compressed. They look identical. It's just where is that number? Is that number outside of the X or is it with the X? But they do the same thing, okay? All right. 
And here's our first example, and it has, of course, it would be a word problem, right? That makes sense. All right, describe um, the dilation as it relates to the parent function. So guys, here's your parent function right here, okay? Here is your other function. Nope, I'm going to need more room than that. Uh, G of X equals this 27,500, and then it looks like 0.92 to the power of x, right? So just look at these two functions. What's the same, what's different? Well, we're only talking about what's different. That's the 27,500 number right here. So what effect, right, will a number have on an entire function? Well, this would be a uh, vertical stretch by that factor. Right, which is 27,500. <laughs> Usually we just have like the number two or five. <laughs> Here they've given us 27,500. Okay. All right. So it's a vertical stretch by that factor. Okay. Yeah, moving on. Okay, we've got reflection. So be careful, guys. We can reflect across the x axis. Or we can reflect across the y-axis. Where is the negative? Is the negative with the exponent, the, in this case the x, or is it outside of that? Okay, well, let's look here. So if we're multiplied by a negative, usually just a negative sign, it's going to reflect across the x, right? We were here, we went to here. Okay, so when the negative is outside of this, we reflect across the x. When the negative is up in the exponent, then it's going to reflect across the y. So they're two totally different things. And of course, they would go right to here. Uh, two moves, folks. Okay, so f of x is 1 third x. g of x is 1 third to the power of negative 1 half x. Okay, so I have two moves. First move, right here. Okay. What does this negative sign in the exponent do? Okay, that, yes, this will reflect over y-axis. Okay, bam. Second move, right, is the 0 0.5. Right, this was the negative sign. Okay, what does the 0 0.5 do? Well, this does a horizontal stretch. So horizontal stretch by the factor of 1 half. Okay. Great. That's it. All right, we're just identifying what is different and what moves does that make. Here we go. Identify what's different. Okay, first part here. Negative sign, right? The negative sign does what? This is a reflection over, is it the x-axis? Is it the y-axis? X-axis, y-axis. This one, x. Okay. Um, what will the 10 do? Right? The 10 does what? Um, this is a vertical stretch by 10. Okay, guys, it, until you just remember these and know these, you're just going to have to continue to look back at that cheat sheet. I don't have a better way, right? I've been doing this forever. Don't ask me why this random stuff is, is stuck in my brain, okay? But it is, all right? So until it becomes stuck in yours, just use your cheat sheet. It's all good, okay? Um, I think we've really talked about everything here. Okay, lots of stuff. Here's our, here's our parent function. Here's our new function, g of x. So we've got 0 0.7 to x plus 4. I count one, two things that we need to describe here, and I'm sure you count them too. Okay? Um, okay. So the first thing I have to describe is right here. And then the second thing I have to describe is right here. 
So what effect does a 0.7, so when we're multiplying a number smaller than one, right? So remember, this will always start with vertical. This would always say horizontal. So this is a vertical choice of a B stretch or vertical compression. What do you think? If you said compression, you are right. So this is a vertical compression uh, by 0.7. Now, what does the 4 do? This is a left or right move. Again, we think plus 4, oh yeah, that should go to the right 4. But it really doesn't. It works the opposite way, right? So then this is going to go left 4 units. Okay? So again, just look at them one at a time. Okie dokie. Yep. Again, guys, here's the... Um, when we multiply by a negative in the exponent, this is a reflection over the y. And then we got this one here, daggers. We've got to do a lot of explaining here. So here's our parent function right here. Okay. How did the g of x function change? Well, two changes. We have to describe the 3 and then this minus 2. So what does each one of those do? Okay. Well, the 3 does what? Horizontal something or other. Horizontal choices would be compression or stretch. Remember, a vertical stretch is the exact same thing as a horizontal compression. So uh, this number is not 0.3. If it was 0.3, we'd be good to go. Okay. Um, so this is a horizontal stretch. By three, and then we've got to decide what does minus two do. Is this a left-right move or is this an up and down move? Well, it's not with the variable; it's outside of that, so that is an up or down move. In this case, this is down two units. Okay, beautiful. Onward we go. Switching colors. Okay, I've got negative. I have three, and I have plus two. Three moves. Describe what each one of them are. What does the negative sign do? Well, that's a reflection across x. So reflect over x. What does a three do? That's a vertical stretch by three. Vertical stretch by a factor of three. And then at the end, plus two, you guessed it, that is an up uh, two units. Okay? Last one, 4x plus three. Okay, so again, now I've got the plus three, right? Just notice the way that they're written differently when we look at these last two functions, right? Here the plus three is written in the exponent line. Here the plus two is outside of that line. Right? So this indicates to me, oh, this is a left or right move. So this would just be a left three units. Okay? Guys, we can keep doing 100 of these. Right? Um, at the end of the day, it's really just about making sure, right, until you get comfortable again with them. Because I know at one point in time, all of us were pretty good with them. Right? Use that uh, handy-dandy cheat sheet, that little half sheet I gave you, until you get comfortable and can do this on your own. Use Desmos to help you out and say, okay, yep, here was the parent function, here's the new function. Okay, yep, I see how that did reflect over the x-axis now, okay? So not a bad idea. Um, so yeah, we should be dangerous enough now to get into all of our other stuff. See you guys.